Now, I'd like to introduce our next speaker for the day, Dr. Noor. Dr. Noor is a professor in the field of environmental and petroleum biotechnology and head manager of Petroleum Biotechnology Lab, Egyptian Petroleum Research Institute, Cario, Egypt. Dr. Noor is an author for five books in the field of biofuel and petroleum refinery and biotechnology and about 120 research papers in the field of oil pollution, bioremediation, biofuels, microbial corrosion, green chemistry, wastewater treatment, and nanobiotechnology and its application in petroleum industry and biofuels. Dr. Noor is also an editor in 16 international journals and reviewer in 18 international journals, supervised 22 MSc and PhD thesis in the field of biofuels, micro macro fouling, bioremediation, wastewater treatment. Dr. Noor participated in 26 international workshops and training courses and 37 international conferences. Dr. Noor is a member in many international associations concerned with environmental health and science. She was also a lecturer and supervisor for undergraduate research project at the British University in Egypt, BUE, and Faculty of Chemical Engineering, Cario University, Egypt and also taught environmental biotechnology course for post doctorates at Faculty of Science, Manufia University, Egypt. Her biography is recorded in Who's Who in the Science and Engineering 9th edition 2006-7. We welcome you, ma'am, and invite you to please enlighten us with your thoughts. Hello, can you hear my voice? Yes, ma'am. Okay, can you see my presentation now? Uh, Ma'am, not yet. I have clicked on share, so what else I can do? Uh, I'm. Ma'am, uh, we can only see the folders. The folders? Yes, ma'am. We can only see the folders. It's okay now. Please switch on the slideshow. Ma'am, please switch on the uh, slideshow move. So you can see now. Can you see the presentation? Yes, ma'am. We can see the presentation. Please switch oh. on the slideshow mode, ma'am. I don't know. If you can see, okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Fine. Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, my, uh, I'm Noor, Professor Noor, Noor Shafi El Gendi from Egypt. Uh, uh, thank you for introducing me and thank you for inviting me to, to give this talk uh, uh, with your colleagues in India. I am here from Egypt now. It's about uh, 7.30 a.m. in the morning. And my talk will be about uh, sustainability and how we can apply nanobiotechnology for reaching for to green and sustainable environment. Uh, I am professor of petroleum and environmental biotechnology. And now I am uh, the head manager of petroleum biotechnology lab in Egypt in Egyptian Petroleum Research Institute, vice head of center of excellence in one of big universities in Egypt, which is modern, uh, uh, modern sciences and arts university. I'm also the coordinator of nanobiotechnology program for faculty of nanotechnology for postgraduate studies in Cairo, Egypt. Vice Coordinator of the Scientific Research Committee, National Council of, for Women in Egypt. My talk will first will talk in, as an introductory part to what's about biotechnology and its applications. As you can see, biotechnology has different application in industry, like in medicine, in agriculture, in non-food industries like that of uh, biodegradable plastics or bioplastics, biocatalysis, biofuels, which is alternative or complementary to different kinds of petrofuels and also for environmental uses for removing the reclamation of environmental waste or for removing of waste to do some kind of waste management. Other er applications of uh, biotechnology in the use of organisms to manufacturing organic products like that of beer and milk products in mining industry for like for example bio leaching for waste recycling, like that of waste management, like that of composting of lignosolosic waste, for example, or also in the cleanup of contaminated uh, sites, like that of bioremediation or bioabsorption in water, uh, or also we can use it for desalination, 
oil and gas industry, like that of the upgrading of petroleum and its fraction, like that of removal of sulfur or nitrogen, or, or by upgrading of heavy crude oil to lighter crude oil, and also for microbial enhanced oil recovery. And now that pr to produce biological weapons like that of we all, we're all we're suffering all over the world now. So biotechnology has different colors and this briefly give it to you the classification of biotechnology by colors. The gold going to bioinformatics and nanobiotechnology applications in general. The red is the application of biotechnology in medicine and human health. White one is the application of biotechnology in biofuels, bio, for example, uh, in industrial like that of biofuels, biopolymer and biocatalysis. Yellow is the application of biotechnology in the food industry. Come the gray, which is the bio application or biotechnology application in environmental applications in general. Green, which is the application of biotechnology in agriculture field like that of biofertilizers and biopesticides. The blue is the application of biotechnology in marine environment and the use of the marine resources in, every, in anything like that of application of microalgae or macroalgae. Brown, which is the application of biotechnology in desert and dry region. Violet or purple is concerning with the patents, laws, ethical and, philosoph and philosophical issues related to biotechnology. Excuse me, can you cannot see my presentation? Hello? Hello? Ma'am, actually slides are not moving. If Excuse me. you can allow me, can I share your slide, ma'am? Okay. okay. Can I share your presentation? Okay. Uh, if possible, can you tell me, ma'am, on which slide currently you are having, ma'am? You're running on? I can, uh, if you would like me to start, okay. No, I can start, ma'am. I can share. Okay. I mean, that's the third slide. Okay, fine, ma'am. I'm just sharing it. Ma'am, is it okay? Is this the slide, current slide? Excuse me? Ma'am, is it your current slide? I is cannot see the slide now. Please try to give me the control. Excuse me? Yes, ma'am. I have given you the control, ma'am. If you can see, I have given you the control. I can. Yes, OK. Can you? I cannot use it now. I'm sorry. I cannot. Can you please make the share with the third slide? Ma'am, is it OK? Yes, can you enlarge it or you can you will keep it like this? No, no, ma'am, I'll enlarge it. Is it okay, ma'am? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> ma'am, if you allow me, I can move the slides uh, as per your lecture ma'am okay okay no problem but can you please uh, open it now this is the fourth slide you please go back to the third one is it okay ma'am okay but this is not full screen is it okay for if it's not full screen? Just wait for a moment, ma'am. Let me okay. second. I cannot see the presentation. Hello? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, just uh, just give me one moment, ma'am. I'm just trying okay. to uh, accept it, ma'am, as per your. No. 
मैम इज इट ओके हेलो हेलो या मैम इज इट ओके मैम it's not a slide it's not a slide show it's not full screen hello ma'am if possible can you continue with this ma'am uh, slide show because it is visible from our side ma'am if you permit us you can see that as, uh, as a whole screen hello yes ma'am i cannot see the presentation now Ma'am, is it now visible? We have uh, done no. the slide. Slide show. Yes, this is. Yes, okay. Fine, ma'am. Can I'm, I'm Can you give me the control to return to the last the previous slide, or you will I, do it? Ma'am, I'll move the slides as per your needs. Means as per your lecture, okay. I'll move the slide on, as you suggest. Okay, so you we can restart from the beginning uh, from the first slide or what? as you wish ma'am because the, the introduction was a fair enough we have gone through that so we can start from here also ma'am so coin could you please go to the uh, first is the second the third slide please no have you seen this okay we can go to the second slide third slide so we are reaching now to, uh, this is as i have, I have spoken or uh, from a while about the colors of biotechnology as you can see we have about the gold one, which is related to nanobiotechnology, the red, which is related to the medicine and the human health, the white, which is related to the industrial biotechnology like that, biopolymers, biocatalysis and biofuels, the yellow, which is related to the food industry and nutritional sciences, the gray one, which is related to the environmental application, the green, which is related to the application of biotechnology in agricultural field, like that of pesticides and biofertilizers, and the uh, blue one, which is related to the marine, and the brown, which is related to the deserts and the dry region, the violet, which is related to patents, laws, ethical issues, and philosophical issues related to biotechnology, and the bad one, which is the dark, which is related to the bioterrorism and biological weapons. Now, my will talk will concentrate on the application of nanobiotechnology in general and how we can use all our resources and the waste resources to valorize it for valuable nanomaterials and nanooxides and nanoparticles to a different application in the field of biotechnology. So waste and biomass valorization in to produce nanomaterials. So can you go now, please? Next slide, please. Now, as we can see, we can achieve the 17 goals of sustainable development by application of nanobiotechnology, because if when we valorize waste or biomass into valuable nanoparticles and with the application of it to reclimate different types of pollution like that of underneath water or the on land so you can save and uh, achieve one of two of the main goals which is safe life underneath water and safe line on land also when you use waste management or use the waste resources you can save food and you can protect your environment so you can protect your land from defrostation so you will and you can apply it for the production of biofertilizers and biopesticides so you ha will have a good source of food all of all of the time also you can overcome the climate the problem of climate change by the application of nanobiotechnology and i will show you how you can we can do this and also you can have secure yourself by having diff, uh, new sources and the resources for clean energy and also for clean air and also for uh, society and uh, overcoming the poverty by having so some sources of new jobs for uh, unemployment and say and solve the unemployment problem so when you have a good environment you will have a secured society and a good economy now, by application of nanobiotechnology, you can provide the three pillars of sustainability and the 17 goals of sustainable development. OK. Next slide, please. So what, when we apply, so we talk about sustainable nanotechnology, it is a very locally available, a local availability. You should have, it is a cost effective process. It is socially acceptable. It is eco-friendly. 
Application of nanotechnology at the green nanotechnology can be applied in wastewater treatment and water desalination, biotechnology and agriculture, medicine and health, food preservation, in uh, energy and the environment. So you can uh, pr uh, do or achieve the, seven, the three pillars of na uh, sustainability. Okay. Okay. Because our aim is health and safe environment, so I will show you some different applications of nanobiotechnology we have achieved. This is part of our publications that we have already published in different journals, international journals and publication on books and also pay, uh, patents. Can you please go on? First of all, I would like to talk to about the problem and how we can solve it, as we can see. With the increase of the population all over the world, there will is a great uh, increase in the demand of uh, petroleum. By year four, it will increase in about 40% by the year 2025. This comes with the depletion of the fossil fuels or non renewable fuels in general, especially the petroleum with high quality, low sulfur content. So this all of this will lead to the increase of global warming. And also because of the fluctuation of crude oil prices, we have uh, facing a lot of economical problem all over the world. By the emissions of the bed uh, or the non-incomplete combustion of petrofuels, we have the increase in pet particulate matters and the gr gr greenhouse gas emissions, which leads to and also SOX and NOx, which leads to the acid rains and to the problem of climate change. Okay. This is uh, when we can, I, I will show you something. We have two types of crude oil, heavy crude oil and light crude oil. The heavy crude oil is the, the asphaltenic crude oil, which has high concentration of asphaltines. So this is the main structure of this asphaltine. If you would like to bio upgrade the crude oil and uh, from increasing its quality from high crude oil, or the uh, heavy crude oil to the lighter crude oil, you should de-asphalt this uh, product. You can de-asphalt it by chemical process, which is very expensive, but you can apply this apply by applying biotechnology and nanobiotechnology to increase the rate of uh, bio-upgrading by, by de degrading or uh, the heavy high molecular weight asphaltines to the lighter fraction, which is the maltine. Okay. These are one of the most problem when oil spills occurs, the persistence of these biomarkers for the, or persistent biomarkers in the environment for a long period of time has a very bad negative impact on the ecosystem. OK. Effect of oil pollution, as we can see. It affects uh, tourism, affect destroyed shorelines, it affects the, li the life underneath water, the fish population, the seabirds, the coral reefs for a very long period of time if oil spills occurs. So if as, long, as long as oil spill occurs, you should quickly reclimate it from the environment. You can do this by physical methods or chemical methods, by using dispersants or by using booms. But upon the application of bioremediation, you assure or the nanobi and nanobiotechnology, you assure that the complete reclamation of the pollution occurs. Excuse me. Oil pollution not only affects the water, but it also affects the on land. For example, if because usually it took the high heavy metal content is, uh, is concomitant with the oil spill which leads to uh, uh, reduce uh, the soil microbial activities and the biomass. When the plant bioaccumulate these heavy metals or the, some of the oil uh, component like that of the aromatics, this also negatively impacted the plant. And when we animals eat this, it is negatively impact, impacted or affected by these pollutants for, for, and its organs accumulate these heavy metals and polyaromatic hydrocarbon. So indirectly, human can be affected by the oil spill from the land, on land or on, in water. OK. These are examples, as we can see, these are the some of, uh, samples from fish that were collected from water have, that have been uh, subjected for uh, oil spill. 
As you can see, it mainly has this, these are the 16 polyaromatic hydrocarbon represented by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency as 16 purity polytons. As you can see, it mainly has high concentration in its organ from the six-membered polyaromatic benzopyrene, which is toxic, mutagenic, neurotoxic, genotoxic, and carcinogenic. Okay. So you now can see the problem of having uh, any oil spill. It persists for a long period of time and accumulated in the organ of fish and plants, which we are eating it by through animals or, uh, or uh, vegetables or plants. Another problem is the main problem, which is the biocorrosion. Biocorrosion is mainly formed from the one of microorganisms like that sulfate reducing bacteria. The sulfate reducing bacteria is, uh, can live on a, over a, a wide relative pH temperature and uh, uh, salinity. It is mainly living in under anaerobic condition. First, by the formation of the aerobic, aerobic biofilm of uh, aerobic microorganisms, and when the media in the, my, these microorganisms attach it to the metal or the surfaces or solid surfaces, now the media underneath it is by producing of exopolymeric uh, substances, which is mainly of polysaccharides, make it nearly in an aerobic area, it's now it's ready for the cross of the sulfate reducing bacteria, which is very corrosive, producing the hydrogen sulfide, which is a very corrosive environment and causes the petting corrosion and the sudden leakages of the pipelines, which leads to very bad impact in the environment by the leakage of petroleum and other wastewater. So we should overcome this problem and killing the sulfate reducing bacteria by a safe nanobiocytes. Okay. Another problem to be solved is the high concentration of the solid biomass all over the world. Egypt suffers from approximately 60 million tons of biomass or of organic wastes. It comes from nearly 60% of which was organic waste. This solid waste can be used for different for the production of nanomaterials and for example for the production of biofuels, another example for the production of biogas and the valuable Pro, uh, products that can solve the problem in, in, a, in a very cost-effective way for of waste management. Okay. Now, these are the three types of uh, waste recycling. If you, this can be by recycling, downcycling, or upcycling. Recycling, which is uh, from plastics to plastics, as you can see, by reduce, reuse, recycle. These are recycling. What, what about downcycling when we use, for example, white paper to prepare cardboard? This is downcycling because we can reuse it, but usually as to produce a lower value product. However, this comes the upcycling, which is using the down uh, or low cost products to produce a valuable value added product. This is uh, upcycling. So by waste management in this area, so you can have a four-fact solution for, for economy, energy, environmental, and waste management. Okay. Okay. Another way, which is biodiesel. Why we go to the biofuels in general, and for example, biodiesel and bioethanol, because for example, biodiesel is a good alternative to the petrosolar or, or petrodiesel is the solar. It is non-carcinogenic. It doesn't, it has no aromaticity. It cannot emit greenhouse gas emissions in general. It's nearly a closed cycle of carbon dioxide. It's about 78 reduction when we apply or use biodiesel. It's 78 production of carbon dioxide emitted. So we can overcome the problem of climate change by the application of biofuels like that of biodiesel. Biodiesel is, has nearly the same qualification like that of petrodiesel. So it can be used in the diesel engine without any modification. Okay. In Egypt, we have, as I said before, uh, by waste by mass, for example, of 60 million ton per year. Most of it can be used for the production of biofuels in general. Even the municipal waste, we can use municipal waste to produce biogas in general, or you can also use for the production of microalgae, which can be used for the production of biodiesel and also biogas. Okay. Now, the main problem we're facing all over the world is that they usually produce the biofuels in general from first generation, second generation, and third generation. The first generation is the production of biofuels from food, 
which uh, food crops like that of corn. And this is very bad. And then the second generation, which is using, for example, non-edible oils and waste cooking oil. And the third generation, which is also recommendable, the second and third one is recommendable. The third generation is from using algae. The main problem is that up to now, they depend on the first generation. And as you can see, this chart it summarizes the problem as eight bushels of corn produce approximately 22 gallons of ethanol per, of, of fuel per year which is enough to feed a human for a whole year. One bushel is equivalent to approximately 25.4 kilograms of corn. Now you can see the problem of food versus fuel. Okay. The major drawbacks as we can we should we should solve by application of nanobiotechnology in the preparation of the biodiesel. The main process is depending on the transesterification. Even when you use the second generation or the third from algae or from the waste cooking oil and non-edible oil, the problems is from the homogeneous catalyst that can be applied, which is acidic or basic catalyst. It is non-reusable. It's very cost it's costly or expensive because it can be used for only once. It's uh, also you can consume a lot and a huge amount of water in the neutralization or the washing step. It's also in the when using acidic acidic catalyst, it is very corrosive and needs high temperature and pressures, which adds to the uh, the expense of the process. Uh, and so when we apply, you can solve this by using bio uh, case, uh, basic catalyst, but you have the main problem, which is washing step which consumes a huge amount of water and the catalyst can be used for only once. Applying, okay, can you go to the second slide? Applying heterogeneous catalyst, okay. Second slide, please. Applying heterogeneous solid catalyst can solve most of this problem because heterogeneous catalyst can be used for different times or uh, at least for at least five times without losing its activity. You can prepare this by catalyst from sheep sources which is really a bundling like that of the waste, as we, I will explain later. And this is also in the nano range, so you can apply nano bio catalyst for the for the production of biodiesel, which decree will decrease the, the uh, when applying waste cooking oil and the catalyst prepared from waste uh, sources or readily available waste sources. This will decrease the price of the biodiesel by from to reaching to approximately nine percent of its cost. Okay. As we, I have said before, why buy catalyst for waste, waste cooking oil? Uh, because it will decrease the price. It's readily available source. You will overcome the problem of food versus fuel. Okay. Why bioethanol? Bioethanol is another source of biofuel, which you can also apply nano biocatalyst in, diff in its different process from the fermentation process in the pretreatment process to produce bioethanol. Mainly the main important advantage of bioethanol is the decrease of the emission of carbon dioxide by approximately 70%. It can be used as, uh, as a complementary to the petrol or the gasoline. Okay. <coughs> This advantage of bioethanol is its calorific value is nearly 30% lower than that of the uh, uh, gasoline. And also the main um, disadvantage of bioethanol is that it's near, it's up to now the, the main source of production of bioethanol is the food sources, okay? When we apply the third generation, which is mainly from the lignocellulose, sorry, the second generation, which is mainly from the lignocellulosic waste, or even the third generation, which is mainly from algae, you, the main problem is uh, comes from two parts. First is the pretreatment to make the cellulose and hemicellulose, which is the sugars available for the enzymes to produce the sugars for fermentation. So to overcome this problem, you should have a good isolate or good enzymes for the pretreatment process to produce the celluloses and hemicelluloses, and also you should have a good isolate for the fermentation of hexoses and pentoses. And also you can apply nanobiotechnology to accelerate the rate of the pretreatment process and the fermentation process. Okay. Now I will show you some examples of our publication for reaching sustainable nanobiotechnology. These are the example when we apply and produce bioethanol, we have in the fermentation process a huge amount of biomass as a spent waste. 
This biomass can be used for bioabsorption and pretreatment, a bi-treatment of water polluted with uh, dyes like uh, the basic blue dyes. And then by applying titania as a hydrosol, at the re we can regenerate this uh, biosorbent and it can be used at least uh, for three times without losing its activity. Another example, please. Next slide. Same, same, we have used this biomass spent waste after the, the, the production of bioethanol to for the bioabsorption of another type of dye and then regenerate it by another type of nanocatalyst, which is also prepared the green by green synthesis like that titania is anatase and in the end rotile and we have applied this for photo degradation of the dyes to reaching to complete mineralization of the dye for the recycling of the water and also for the recycling and pre preparation or reuse of the biocatalyst or the bisorbent excuse me okay we have also managed to increase the rate of bioabsorption by the mixing of the spent waste of the uh, bi uh, biomass produced from bioethanol fermentation process with the polyaniline nanocatalyst as uh, as you can uh, nanosorbent as you can see it increases the bioabsorption rate and the removal of the sulfonated acid acid red dyes okay another example is the animal bone by simple calcination, we have managed to produce the fluoroapatite and the hydroxyapatite nanocatalyst, which has good basicity, good speci specific surface area, poor volume and poor diameter. And it, okay. Okay. This catalyst has a good photo degradation capabilities and it can degrade and water and reclimate water from coming out from the petroleum refinery, which has high concentration of phenols and the chlorophenols. Okay. We have also managed to use this catalyst, biocatalyst or nano biocatalyst prepared from waste to use it as a biocatalyst in the transesterification of waste cooking oil. And we have managed to produce biodiesel, the same which is more, yani, more uh, beneficial because it decreased the cost of the process. We have managed to produce approximately 96% uh, uh, transesterification of waste cooking oil compared with the commercially Novozyme, which is expensive enzymes used for the production of biodiesel. And the spent waste of biocatalyst, which is uh, have fluoroapatite after the transesterification process for reaching to the point of zero waste, we have managed to produce it for as a photocatalyst for the deg photo degradation of nitrophenol. So we can reclimate water and also produce biodiesel from this animal bone nanocatalyst. OK. We have also managed by from the waste like that of water melon peels to produce another types of nanocatalyst, which is zinc oxide, which has a good photo degradation capabilities for reclamation of water like that, as we have managed to uh, photo degrade malachite green. OK. Applying this zinc oxide, the green synthesized zinc oxide and the, the animal bone the, uh, nanocatalyst, we have managed to uh, use it as a biocide for the sulfate reducing bacteria, which is the main cause of biocorrosion. OK. We have managed also from the water extract uh, of uh, some uh, peels like that of outer brown skin onion or outer skin of garlic or orange peels, mandarin peels and uh, the wastewater from henna leaves and lupine with better water lupine. This this uh, extract water extract is also in the nano as like that of nano emulsion have been used for as a corrosion inhibitor for the chemical corrosion produced from up, uh, as in the acidic uh, media. OK. We and this uh, scanning electron microscope, you show that the depress, the nano depress of this uh, extract on the, as you can see from the right hand micrograph, the smooth surface free of any corrosion and the left hand is that we have the spitting corrosion caused by the acid media applying the these nano emulsions. It has a good corrosion act as a good corrosion inhibitor. It's safe, green to end eco friendly and cost effective. Also, this uh, in, uh, extract and nano emulsion have been used as a biocide uh, against different types of sulfate reducing bacteria, a halophilic and halophilic one and non-halotolerant. 
and also it acts as a good by site for mixed culture collected from different Egyptian oil fields. It also it can be act as a by site for macro foulants, not only micro foulants, and it has the main important thing. It's cost and it is cost effective and eco friendly. It has less toxic effect to, to non target C organisms like that, isopods, amphipods, and decopods. Okay. Also, we have managed to from this extract a nano emulsion to the green senses say for the green senses of uh, hematite nanoparticles. This hematite nanoparticles has a good uh, band gap which is uh, can be used for as a photodegrader. OK, go to the next slide, please. As a photodegrader. It has a good uh, photo character as a photo good photo catalyst for different polytons, chlorophenols and different types of uh, dyes. OK. We have also managed by the water extract of orange peels to produce silver nanoparticles. The silver nanoparticles has a good uh, biocidal effectivity of against uh, and bactericidal activity against pathogenic microorganisms and is not only uh, bacteria, but yeast and fungi. And it, co it is cost effective because it costs approximately 81 US dollar per 10 gram of silver nanoparticles. We are compared to that of the global cost of the chemical synthesized silver nanoparticles, which is $250 per 10 grams. So we reach it to saving for approximately 68% saving by the green senses of the silver nanoparticle using the waste peels of orange. OK. We have also managed by the using mandarin peels to produce silver nanoparticle. The cost was approximately 0.76 US dollar per gram of green synthesized silver nanoparticle. And the waste after the, the spent waste after the production of silver nanoparticle have been used for the production of the valuable activated carbon, which is also in the nanoscale. This activated carbon has different application, like it can also be used as a, Adsorbent, it can be also used as a mobilizing matrix for bacteria for different application. The activated carbon also produce, can be used as a, uh, as a uh, in the preparation of biodiesel as a catalyst. OK. We have also managed from the, this green synthesized sulfur to be act as a biocide for the uh, biomass from uh, as, uh, sewage water. So you can reacclimate the pathogenic water to be or, the, or uh, if, uh, infected water to be reused for uh, uh, agriculture. Uh, OK. And also we have managed to prepare biologically using fungus, so silver nanoparticles. And as we can see, OK. These silver nanoparticles have been used for as a biocide and the green synthesized or biosynthesized silver nanoparticles as a biocide for the sulfate reducing bacteria. As you can see, the intact SRP, the cells is free and is uh, alive and uh, the cell wall is not intact. After the application of silver nanoparticle, as you can see, cell leakages occurred and the, the death of and the pro and the flagella of the sulfate reducing bacteria is broken and so the death occurred and the biocide silver nanoparticle we have approved it as a good by has a good bicidal activity against the sulfate reducing bacteria okay we have also managed by biological methods for using application of aspergillus as a as a fungi it's a, a extract a water mycel extract of its mycelia have been used for the preparation of copal oxide with good super paramagnetic uh, ferromagnetic properties this nano oxide have many many applications in industrial field and also has a good biocidal activity against pathogenic microorganisms okay Another problem, as I have told you before, the bio upgrading of crude oil. Now we are trying to solve this problem by the application of nano bio catalyst. OK. We next slide, please. We have managed to prepare fer, uh, ferromagnetic nanoparticles. The ferromagnetic nanoparticles has uh, can when we do decorate uh, the microorganism different microorganism, the gram positive or gram negative microorganisms in general, it has different application. Because upon applying this coating, by coating this microorganism, 
you can solve the problem of separation of microorganisms from the bioreactors so easily because the one of the main costs coming from the uh, bioprocesses in general in any industrial field is how you can reuse the microorganisms without losing its activity. How can you protect it from contamination? How can you increase the lifetime of the biocatalyst? How can we use it? How can you separate it in a very cost effective process? Because one of the major problem is the separation by, by for example, centrifugation. It's very cost effective cost process and also expensive and they waste a lot of energy and money. So by applying magnetic nanoparticle, you can solve all of this problem. As you can see, this magnetic uh, prop, uh, micro uh, particles has a good base, uh, specific surface area, poor volume and poor diameter. It can absorb and well and coating the microorganisms without affecting the, the enzymatic activity of the microorganism or and it's very safe to the microorganism. And also it has good absorption capacity to the some compound like that of sulfur compound and also the pyrene and also the carbazole as an example of the nitrogenous compound. So next slide, please. Next slide, please. Hello. Uh, excuse me, yes, go to the next. No, oh, you have you. jumped your and the slide before, please. OK. Go up, please. Another slide up. I just wait for a moment, ma'am. OK. The slide four, please. Yeah, thank you. This is an example when you apply, for example, uh, the, magne uh, the magnetized nano micro uh, 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 microorganism or, or by coating the bacillus, for example, uh, by the magnetic nanoparticles. As you can see, uh, it's well absorbed on the surface of the microbial cell. The magnetic nanoparticle has no toxic effect to the microorganism. The coated cells show higher biodesulfurization rate, higher biodenitrogenation rate, higher biodegradation rate than the free cells. It, it can reach to complete removal, for example, compared with approximately uh, doubled the rate, doubled the rate of biodesulfurization, doubled the rate of biodegradation, doubled the rate of biodenitrogenation. And also, as the, it can be reused for at least four successive times without losing its activity, it, it's also tolerable to the toxic intermediates it produced during the bioprocesses. It can be stored for at least one month without in the four degree under four degree without losing its activity. It can be used for a long period of time, so you are you have overcome the problem of the short lifetime of the catalyst. It has the main advantage of the magnetic separation, which would resolve the many operational problems. Okay, but the main when we apply this and as a cost as a case study we have pro, uh, pro tried to uh, to do this on uh, apply this on uh, diesel oil for desulfurization the main cost for the process comes from the preparation of the magnetic nanoparticle chemically prepared magnetic nanoparticles and also the main cost comes from the preparation of the biomass itself the media the media component is expensive now by applying the green synthesis or the nanobiotechnology by applying the green synthesis of the magnetite, we have overcome this problem. The cost of the process of the preparation decreased by approximately to the tenth of this value. And also we have managed to uh, the green synthesis. We have overcome the problem by uh, uh, of the cost of the preparation of the media of the biomass by applying the agro-industrial waste like that of molasses and corn steep liquor for the preparation of the biomass. Okay. Okay. Okay, I have uh, already talked about this. Now to catch the wave of biofuel, as I have told you before, we can prepare bioethanol as an example of biofuels and, uh, and biodiesel as example of the bio biofuels also. We can apply magnetite the green synthesized magnetized as a catalyst for the transesterification process. We can also apply the magnetic nanoparticles to increase the rate of the cellulase production 
and all for the for the pretreatment process, the biomass and waste management for the sugar production and for the fermentation process. Okay. This is another type we have managed to prepare from egg shells, mollusk shells, and animal bones, nanocatalyst like that of calcium oxide and fluoroapatite and hydroxyapatite. Okay, go to the next slide to produce biodiesel. Okay. This is the process uh, summarizes the process is simple calcination process. Just you grind the, the, the waste and then by simple calcination, you can produce the catalyst in a nanoscale. OK. And by comparing its activity with the commercially available chemically prepared calcium oxide and the expensive Novozyme, as you can see, the range of the production of biodiesel using the nanobio catalyst prepared from waste can range from 90 to 93 percent which is higher than that of Novozyme and within the same range of like that of the produced by diesel using the chemical calcium oxide. The main advantages is that the cost uh, decreased by uh, of the production of biodiesel using this uh, nano biocatalyst reaching to approximately $2.5 per gallon by diesel. Okay. As we can see by applying this biodiesel and applying uh, the uh, using this nano biocatalyst uh, prepared from waste products or waste biomass, uh, the greenhouse gas emission decreased in general. OK. We have also managed by silica produced or extracted from rice straw to be used as immobilizing matrix for the enzymes uh, uh, like that of uh, uh, gram positive bacillus stratophericus. This we have managed to produce it, uh, lipase enzymes, which can be used for the, as a, by the immobilizing it by using the silica extracted from rice straw to produce uh, biodiesel as a trans used in the transesterification process. As compared with the commercial available Novozyme, the Novozyme have been used for only once, but our new uh, immobilized catalyst has can be used for at least six times without losing its activity. OK. Another way for the application also of nano catalyst is when you produce by, for example, uh, you can solve the problem of wastewater treatment and also produce the biomass of bio uh, algae which can be used for the production of lipids which can be used for the production of biodiesel as you can see we have used the tetracelamus uh, for the FICO degradation of one of the examples of pyrene the main, one of the pollutants coming out from the uh, petroleum hydrocarbons this carcinogenic high molecular weight polyaromatic hydrocarbon as you can see this algae can after the can the rate of the biodegradation can be increased by the application also of magnetite nanocatalyst or the other nano biocatalyst and also this lipid can be used for the produced from this biomass can be used for the production of biodiesel and the waste biomass after the production of biodiesel can be used for the production of biogas by anaerobic fermentation okay so you have reclimated water, you have done wastewater treatment and it produces biofuel. Another way for also the application of nano biocatalyst, also the spirul applying spirulina, you can produce lipid, you can produce different types of proteins, carbohydrates and uh, 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 nucleic acids, and also different types of natural dyes. Okay. This is another example for the fermentation process. If you have lignocellulosic waste like bagasse, you can produce bioethanol and the spent waste can be used for the prepare uh, water biosorption or uh, the oil, uh, by absorbing the oil spill like that oil spill of kerosene or diesel and the solid uh, waste after the biosorption process of the and the biotreatment of water can be used for the production of solid biofuel with a good calorific value. So you have reached to zero waste and another type of source of fuel and also the spent waste like that or used can be used for the preparation of uh, uh, the, the after fermentation. The wastewater after fermentation can be used also for the preparation of or the green synthesis of nano catalysts with different applications. Okay. 
This is another type or source of uh, biofuel, the macroalgae, which is very abundant on, in all, on all of our seas and oceans. You can use this macroalgae uh, for the preparation of bioethylon in a, as a third generation biofuel. Okay. This uh, diagram can uh, summarize to you how you can produce uh, different types of nanomaterials with different application from the one source of lignocellulosic biomass and also for, by producing different types of biofuels to reach for sustainability and the complete, complete life cycle assessment. From lignocellulosic waste biomass, we can, by cost effective hydrothermal pretreatment, you can prepare the cellulosis and hemicellulosis. Deliglin, produced from this step can be used for the green senses of metal and oxide and metal and metal oxide nanoparticles with different application the cellulose can be used for also for solid by solid state saccharification or en our enzymatic hydrolysis can produce enzymes also can produce the sugars after, which can be fermented to different biorefineries like that of bioethanol biobutanols and bioacids the yeast coming out from the process of fermentation can be used as a single cell protein and also this with the spent waste biomass can be used for the bio treatment of water and after that the waste um, with the pollutant can be used for as a refused derived fuel as a solid biofuel the metal oxide and the activated carbon produced from this waste biomass can be used for as a catalyst for the bio denitrogenation bio desulfurization and the bio upgrading of petroleum and its distillate can be used as a biocides and water disinfection can be used as a catalyst for the transesterification and production of another type of biofuel, which is biodiesel. Can be used also for wastewater treatment as a photocatalytic treatment. Okay. As a, as a conclusion, by applying, okay, by applying the green synthesis and the nanobiocatalyst, ex, excuse me, where is the slide? By applying the green synthesis or sustainable green synthesis of nanobiocatalysts and its application in different fields of biotechnology, you can have a great positive impact on national economy, environment, industry, and the energy sector, as you can produce alternative green fuels, reduce the dependency on foreign fuel, create green energy industry, produce green catalyst crucial inhibitors by site. You can issue less carbon dioxide and less emissions of the greenhouse gas emissions in general. Uh, and also decrease the uh, overcome the most of our waste management problems in any very economic and valuable way, preserving our food supply chain. They would significantly reduce in unemployment, des desertification, food problem, and open up huge markets for recycling and waste. Briefly, the valorization of waste, especially the organic waste, to useful, efficient biocatalyst and nanocatalyst and biocide agroindustrial waste can be valorized in into inexpensive feedstock to biofuel. All of this will have positive impact on energy, environment, economic waste management problems. Okay, so in conclusion, okay, upon recycling, the possibilities are endless. So there will be always a better tomorrow by thinking green and go toward the sustainability and using of nanobite catalysts to, to, uh, to have a green and sustainable environment, which will achieve the three pillars of uh, sustainability, the economy, environment, and healthy. So, okay, and now thank you, and I'm ready for any question as, as, my, as long as you wish. So I would like to ask the audience if uh, they are having any query, please mention in the text box. We can surely ask them to solve that issue. Uh, lastly, I would like to thank Dr. Noor Ma'am for uh, providing us such an insightful lecture uh, on such a significant area related to the field of uh, green nanobiotechnology and environmental biotechnology. And I strongly believe that uh, this insightful lecture will definitely help them to explore more sustainable solutions to several environmental issues, which Ma'am has elaborated very uh, well. And she has given a thorough knowledge about all the environmental issues and how to uh, utilize the natural bioproducts for their for finding uh, sustainable solutions to those issues. So I'm really thankful to Ma'am, highly thankful to you, Ma'am, for providing such an insightful lecture on environmental issues, which we all are facing nowadays, Ma'am. Thank you so much, Ma'am. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to join this wonderful conference. Thank you very much.